In an earlier lesson, we learned that in Python, you can multiply a string and an integer. And the result would be the string repeated as many times as specified by the integer. So if we press enter here, our output would be banana, banana, banana. In this video, we are going to learn how to create this using a while loop instead. Now, the point of this exercise is not to make things more complicated. The point of this exercise is to help us get a little more comfortable with working with while loops. Now, of course, in practice, if you find a simpler way to do something, then you go ahead and use that simpler method instead. Let's begin with a demonstration of our program. The first thing it does is it asks the user for a word. So let's say we type in banana. The second line of input is for an integer. Let's say I type in 3. And then the expected output is banana, banana, banana. And here is the source code of our program. The first line asks the user for input and then stores it in a variable called word. The second line asks the user for input once again, converts that input into an integer, and stores it in a variable called m. So we assume that the user is always going to input the correct data. First, a word, followed by an integer. In this next line, we declare a variable named s and initialize it with an empty string. An empty string is created by placing two quotation marks together. This is different from writing a quotation mark followed by a space, followed by a closing quotation mark. This would be a string made up of a space, while this one is an empty string. You can think of this variable as a container that we are going to use to build our string piece by piece. Using a loop, we are going to repeatedly concatenate the word to this string until we produce the final output. Here, we have a variable named i, which is initialized with a value of zero. And then we have a while loop that has a terminating condition that states, as long as the value of i is less than the value of m, then we should keep the while loop running. And in each iteration of the while loop, we will first concatenate the value of word to the value of our string s by saying s plus equals word. This would be the same thing as saying s is equal to s plus word. And then finally, we update the value of i so that eventually our while loop will terminate when i is no longer less than m. At that point, we would have multiplied our word by the value of m. And that string value would be stored here in the variable named s. So after we exit the while loop, we go ahead and print s in order to see our output. Let's have a run through with the following input, banana and three. When we get to the while loop, i is zero, and m is 3. Therefore, i is less than 3, so we enter the while loop, and then s, which is currently an empty string, plus equals the word banana, makes s equal to banana as well. And then i goes from 0 to 1, and then we go back up to the top of the while loop, and check if i is still less than m. i is 1 and m is 3, so this is still true. So we go to our next iteration. s, which is currently banana, plus equals the word banana, turns the value of s into banana banana. And then i plus equals 1 makes i go from 1 to 2. And then we go back up to the top of the while loop and check if i is still less than m. i is 2 and m is 3, 
So this is still true. So once again, we go to our next iteration. S, which is now banana banana, plus equals the word banana, turns the value of S into banana banana banana. And then I plus equals one makes I go from two to three. And then we go back up to the top of the while loop and check if I is still less than M. I is now three and M is three. So this is now false. So we exit the while loop and we go ahead and print the value of S. So in our output window, we will see banana, banana, banana. What happens if we placed the print statement inside the while loop instead? If we did this, then we would execute the print statement in every iteration. So we will actually get to see the progress of our string as it is being multiplied. First, we'll see banana in the output window, and then banana, banana, and then finally banana, banana, banana. But since we only want to display the completed string, it's important that we place the print statement after the while loop. Now, what if instead of having the entire multiplied string be displayed in one line, we wanted each repetition of the word to be in its own line? So if you wanted to do that, you could go ahead and edit our while loop and then add a new line after we add the word. So to do that, we go ahead and say s plus equals, and then in quotation marks, backslash n. Backslash n is the escape sequence for a new line. So every time you add this to a string, the next characters will be displayed in the next line. So that way, in each iteration, we now add word to the string, followed by a new line. So in the next iteration, the next repetition of the word will now come below the previous repetition. So if you go ahead and test this, you should see the result come out as banana, banana, banana. But each repetition of the word is now in its own line. Okay, now notice that in the output, we have this extra empty line. This is to be expected because we are adding a new line after every word. We have the first word and then a new line, and then we have the second word and a new line, and then the last word and the last new line, giving us that empty line. Now, what if we wanted to fix this so that we don't have this empty line? we would have to edit the code so that we only add a new line if we are not in the last iteration. We are going to need an if statement for that. But what condition will we use? How do we represent the last iteration of our loop using code? We can use our variable i to determine which iteration we are currently in. If the value of i is 0, then we are in the first iteration. If it is 1, then we are in the second iteration, and so on. Now, given m number of iterations, what is the value of i in the last iteration? You can pause the video and think about the answer, and then continue watching. Okay, so m is the number of times that we want to multiply a given string. This means that if m is 3, for example, then we would like to iterate 3 times. But because we are starting the value of i at 0, then the last iteration is represented by i having a value of m minus 1. Think about it. If m is 3, then in the first iteration, i is 0. In the second iteration, i is 1. And in the third iteration, i is 2. So if in the last iteration, i is equal to m minus 1, what should our if statement look like? Remember that we only want to add the new line if we are not in the final iteration. So you can pause the video again 
to think about the answer and then continue watching. Okay, so this is how our if statement would look like. If i is not equal to m minus 1. In other words, if we are not in the final iteration, then we go ahead and add the new line. If we are in the final iteration, then i would be equal to m minus 1. At that point, this condition would therefore be false. So the computer will ignore s plus equals new line, and the output will no longer have that empty line at the end. So let's go ahead and test that. Banana and three. And as you can see, we no longer have the empty line. And finally, I will leave you with an exercise that you can try on your own. Modify our simple program so that the output looks like this. I'll type banana and five. Notice that for all the odd numbered instances of the word, there is exactly one empty line after it. Even for the last line, there is only one extra line. The even numbered instances, on the other hand, do not have an empty line after them. If we try an even numbered integer, say six, then the output will still be similar. One extra line after each odd numbered instance, and then no extra line for all the even numbered instances. But before you start working on the solution, here are a couple of restrictions. Do not use Python's string multiplication operation. Just edit the while loop that we created in the video. Your loop counter must still start at zero. And do not modify our usage of the print statement as seen in the video. In Python 3, you can actually pass an optional argument to change or remove the new line. That is the default that comes at the end of every print statement execution. So for instance, in this example, this part here that says end is equal to an empty string, this replaces the default new line that comes at the end of every print statement into an empty string instead. And then after that, try coming up with another solution without those previous restrictions, just to see if you can come up with something simpler. And I will also leave you with a hint. You can use the modulo operator to solve this problem. All right, so that is the end of this video. Thank you for watching and good luck.